Hello, Bellies. We are making elk hide heart rattles. Raw hide rattles here. And these ones are filled with intention and crystals and all kinds of beautiful juju. So I'm gonna show you how to take it from start to finish to make your own. Although if you have one of my kits, then most of it's already been done for you. So we start out with actual elk raw hide. Um, and these ones are ethically sourced, so make sure that the intention you're putting into it doesn't start with a negative intention because that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to create with some healing medicine here. So you start out with a big old rawhide. You're going to soak it, and as you soak it, you're going to notice the color change. It's going to go from a dark brown to a lighter white So color. while our rawhide's soaking, we want to make sure we have everything we need so that we can go through and move quickly to get our rattle finished without having to stop a whole lot or having it dry out too fast. So you're going to also want to make sure that you soak your lacing. This is basically just cut rawhide. You can also use string, you can use leather, but I like the actual rawhide that the elk is made out of as well because it helps to fuse a little bit tighter and make sure that all of those cracks are not going to have whatever's inside falling out. So then you also want to grab some pliers because sometimes it can be hard to get them through because I do use the smallest hole possible because again, we don't want anything slipping out. Um, with this rattle, you can make it you have everything to make it like this, um, or you can actually look around for a really fun stick and you can actually put the rattle on a stick as well. And so I am gonna show you how to do that it's just because it's a little bit tricky. And so it's kind of fun to go on a little hike or find a stick and, and make it part of your rattle. And then that way you can rattle free handed um, instead of having to hold it in your hands. You're also gonna want um, some stones, some crystals, some beads. So these are some that I absolutely love. And I just got these from the rock and fossil shop here in St. George over on Sunset. And you can see that there's all of these beautiful crystals. So you can go through and you can pick one crystal for each chakra. You can put in ones that represent something specifically to you. For example, I have some tiger's eye there that helps with intuition. I've got some lapis here that helps with communication. I've got some amethyst. You can see the tiniest little purple one that helps with some protection. There's rose quartz in here. There's turquoise in here. There's a lot of jasper for rooting and grounding. So depending on what your intention is, you can change what you're putting inside. So I, of course, love crystals. So I'm putting some crystals in this one. Um, I'm also, because I like the sound and I think it's fun, I'm also putting in some dried beans <laughs> because it reminds me to remember to be magical and mystical. And if you think of Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, it reminds me of all the things that are possible and all that can grow. Plus it sounds really good to me. So I'm putting in some beans, I'm putting in some crystals. I have some coral, which helps with emotions and flow. And then I've also got some wood beads I'm putting in. And this one, um, this particular rattle is going to a sweet friend of mine. And so I'm going to sit for a minute and think about her and what she would like in her rattle. And I'm going to add a few things. I'm definitely adding some pieces for some shadow work and some beautiful fire energy for her as well. So now that I've got the pile of which crystals I want, we're going to put them in, but we're not going to put them in until the very end. Uh, and that's because it's really hard to have the crystals in if you don't smelly <laughs> craft so you'll want to make sure that you do it in an area where you don't have people who are sensitive to smell especially rawhide animal smell um, beware of dogs because it would be a treat for them my dog's over here but she's absolutely used to this she'll take a nap right next to the rawhide which looks like she is <laughs> so you're going to take your rawhide and you can actually cut it with just a pair of scissors and you'll cut out your pattern on paper or you can freehand it you'll cut out your heart and then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to poke holes in the whole perimeter of it on just one of them. So whatever you decide to make, you're gonna cut two of. So here I've got two hearts cut. Um, again, if you got the kit, yours already has all the nice holes poked in it. If not, poke holes in one first because it slides all over the place. And then you're gonna take the second that doesn't have any holes yet and you're actually gonna poke holes in the other side. Now you wanna make sure that you have two of the right sides or two of the wrong sides together because you don't want to have a wrong side on one side and then a smooth right side on the other. So make sure you have inside facing just like if you're doing sewing or even outside facing is fine for this part because we want the holes to match. Uh, they're not going to line up exactly perfect which is good because that gives you the nice puffiness to it. So we're going to start out. You can tell which side is the rough side because if you look really closely you'll be able to see that the skin here has in texture to it. So there's some 
spots where it bumps up, where the other side is completely smooth. So it's just like fabric. It's the nap side and the smooth side. So make sure that your nap sides are matching. This one's a little bit more tricky. Yep, yeah, so see, I've got some roughness in here. So I, this is my nap side and this is my nap side. So I've sandwiched them together. And then by doing that, I can see through the holes of where I need to press. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it down on my board. I have my trusty little spike, trusty hammer, and I'm just gonna go right over the holes that are already there. So you put it through the hole. And then you're allowing it to go all the way through. And we're gonna lace it through there, okay? And listen to all the sweet birds. So we're gonna take the lacing and you're gonna start by cutting the tip just on an angle. Just like that. You can see, it's not the best background. <laughs> so it, we're gonna cut the tip so that it makes this sewing angle. And with that point, we're gonna go through starting on the wrong side, the side that has the nap, and you're gonna thread it through, and then you're gonna tie a little knot. And that way we have our starting point and we don't lose it, okay? And then you're gonna take the next one and you're gonna go through the other side. Oops, I have crystals trying to jump in. Apparently she gets that one too. <laughs> so again, you're going through the wrong side to wrong side, putting both naps together. Okay, so then now that we've got our lacing through both of them, we're gonna go through both holes, creating what's called a whip stitch. So we're gonna loop over and then go through. It helps to go through both of them, one at a time though. So I went through one hole and the next hole. If you move, miss count of your holes and you end up like on an angle, that's totally fine. Just make sure you're pulling it tight each time because you have just enough lacing to go all the way around. And by pulling it tight is what's gonna give it that nice puffy look. So we're gonna continue looping through. And if you get stuck or if it gets too hard to pull through, because it is wet, you can use your pliers to help guide it. So you go in one and through the other. And you're basically making these little loops and we're gonna go all the way around. Okay, so we've got our entire rattle that is now stitched all the way around and we've got this nice little pocket. So this is the part where your patience gets to come in <laughs> because in order for our rawhide to be pushed out and be smooth on all the edges, we need to add some sand or some dirt and let it dry for another 24 hours. So in this case, I have some dirt here. Um, the main point is that when we add the moisture, we don't want it to become a rock. So a sandy dirt is going to be the best if you have access to it. Um, if not, then regular sand, this one is from the dollar store. And then you're gonna want something to push on. So this is just a stick I found. You can use um, your finger if it's small enough. You can see that I can reach my fingers all the way in. So I'm able to use this one. If I wasn't able to reach it and I was doing a larger rattle, then I would definitely need the stick. So you can see my stick here is rounded because I don't wanna be cutting my rawhide. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna start to pour in my sand. Okay, so it's gonna soak down, sink in, and then you're just gonna push and get all the little knots okay. out. So now that I've got my two loose ends and I've got my stick kind of in there, you'll see that I have some holes still left. So I'm going to loop through those holes, just doing the same whip stitch that I've been doing, going through both sides, and we're just tightening it around the base. It is a little tricky when you get the dirt in there. You can always rinse off if you need to. So, and then this one, I'm actually looping through this side. You can see right there. And I'm going around to this hole. So it holds the wood in place. And then put a little clip or clothespin right there. 
So you should still have a stick or another round object so you can drain the sand out, but you're just gonna allow it to sit clipped and for 24 hours. you can hours. see I have these extra little rawhide strings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rehydrate these. Now, if you were going to put a stick in, you wouldn't need to rehydrate them. Uh, you could just stick your beads right into it, stick your stick back in and twist it up, right? But since I'm not doing that for this one and I'm just gonna have it be a little hand rattle, I'm actually going to take a little bit of water here. And I dyed it blue so you can see that it's water. <laughs> And, oh, I have a little bit of sand left in there. Okay, and I want to get this rawhide wet again because what we're gonna do is we're gonna lace that back through and tie it off, okay? So in order to get it nice and wet, I'm gonna leave it just the tip soaking in. So you can prop it, or in this case, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of water in the bottom and let it catch. So as you can see, it's not all the way in, but it's just enough. So I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back to it and we're just going to tie in and then you're going to, well, first you'll put your crystals in, your rocks, your stones, and then you're gonna tie it and you're gonna tuck the knot. So if this had been fully hydrated, it'd be all squishy again. And so as a squishy one, <laughs> you would do one more loop through both holes. You would tie the knot in a double knot and then you're gonna stuff the knot inside. And then sometimes when it's all soggy, you'll have the bottom half will be soggy still, the top half will not. You can use a pair of pliers and let it rest, or even a clothespin or a clip of some sort to help it diffuse together. Let it dry for another 24 hours and your rattle is complete.